So very well welcome to everyone from uh, myself. I'm a Professor Patti Kostkova. I'm the director of the UCL Center for Digital Public Health in Emergencies, celebrating its third anniversary today. It's not exactly today, but we round it up a little bit. Today is a special day because we also have an annual project meeting with our MIVAR project celebrating uh, our achievements in Brazil and also in Portugal. So you will see a number of international speakers who, are, who all have come face to face in person to London to share achievements with this special project looking at mosquito surveillance in a tropical part of Brazil. And we will have a half a day of uh, showcasing achievements from this project. Also, another digital interventions we've been developing in DPHE over the last three years, especially our COVID uh, interventions. And also, the highlight of the day will be a strategic panel starting at 6 p.m. in the evening with uh, five panelists uh, discussing where are we with One Health? How can we improve the surveillance of the animal and the human diseases to limit spillovers and emergence of new pathogens and how we can prepare better for the next pandemics? So I'm so glad to see all of you here, even though it's a sunny day in London. It's great to be indoors and enjoying a face-to-face -face event. We have coffee breaks with real coffee. No Zoom break, and we have a catering and reception in the evening after the panel. So you are more, more than welcome to stay and enjoy some networking and discussions with the speakers, the panelists, and obviously uh, among yourself. So I just give a very brief talk to summarize what the DPHE Center has achieved. Uh, those of you who are interested in the details can pick up uh, this, this report, which has been just printed. It's outside, and uh, if you're not interested in detail, you can just listen to me over the 10 minutes to see what achievements we have done and uh, where are we going as a digital public health center in emergencies. So the vision for the Centre established three years ago was to use innovation. Some of you know I'm a computer scientist by background, however, the vision has been to bring together public health, emergencies and computer science together as an interdisciplinary field, digital public health, where there has been a major, major gap. So looking at the cutting edge innovations and strengthening the global capacity and preparedness. So as if we knew three years ago that there would be uh, pandemics and the capacity and preparedness wasn't quite in place as we have all seen during COVID-19 and in response to public health emergencies. And the center is of course conducting research. So I will give you highlights of our research projects. We are teaching, we're teaching our students to inspire the next generation in public, public health and innovation. We're organizing number of events, conference, and also engaging with the community. We work globally, so this map is really showcasing where DPHE has got collaborations and where we have a variety of our projects. So literally, ex except Antarctica, I think we work on every continent. The idea was to look at how emergencies, and our speciality is health emergencies, but actually they could be non-health emergencies, they, uh, they could be natural disasters and earthquakes and tsunamis and, uh, and urban emergency crashes, for example, mass events like Olympics, they all create um, an opportunity which is, has got massive health risks. So how do technological uh, opportunities, mobile phones, mobile apps, sensing uh, IoT devices, how social media, how all this can strengthen our opportunity to understand what's going on and how we can respond to those emergencies has been, has been the kind of cornerstone of the central activities. So what have we achieved uh, in the last three years? Well, I'm so proud that the center received uh, the first prize. It was the winner um, of the best team of the year 2020 by Computing Rising Star Awards 2020. Unfortunately, the ceremony was online, so we couldn't even have a good party. We just watched it, watched it on Zoom, but we were awarded that this was kind of the top screen showcasing that we have given an impression that the team is enjoying and takes pride in what it does. I think we do take pride what, have, what we have achieved. 
In addition to being the team of the year 2020, uh, myself and my colleagues have also achieved a number of prizes. I won the Innovator of the Year for our Gazda initiative in Nigeria and also for our uh, journaling app in 2020. And colleagues of mine, Georgiana and Caroline, have also been successful. So it's, it's really great to see that the center isn't just an academic institution, but is valued and appreciated by industry awards and industry prizes. As I said, we just all co we're also organizing uh, events. So I established a Digital Public Health Conference in 2009, and it's been running for 10 years. We have to give it a break over COVID because I don't believe in Zoom conferences. I think it is about the networking and meeting people and spinning new ideas over a coffee break. So the conference will be resumed now we are coming out of the pandemics. I'm also chairing um, a chair of a Frontiers Digital Public Health Journal. So those of you who are thinking of a venue where you could publish your interdisciplinary research in this field, you don't have to go any further. We've been fortunate to have a high media coverage for our innovations and our research. Also during the pandemics, um, I was awarded a Corona Persona by Science a Business um, Journal, and we've been quite highly covered. Recently, um, just a couple of months ago, when I was uh, visiting our colleagues in Funchal, we were on the local news uh, for the World Health Day. Um, I was speaking as a keynote speaker. So the center has got some achievements, and I'm really grateful to all the team members who contributed to those prizes. So a quick overview of the, um, the themes and the research topics we are working on. Um, so if you're interested, you can look through the report to see more details about these projects. So as I mentioned, we, do, we work a lot with our social media. So in the first pandemics, or the previous pandemics, not first, 2009, we've been one of the first team looking at analyzing social media and Twitter to find how social media could be used as an early warning system. And we have predicted um, the swine flu about two to three weeks before the official surveillance data at the HPA, Health Protection Agency in the UK, and CDC in the US would have known. As I mentioned, we also extensively work in Brazil uh, on participatory surveillance systems uh, in northeast Brazil, and you will learn a lot about these projects throughout the afternoon. It, it uh, includes IoT devices sensing, it also includes the mobile app, and also looking at how we can strengthen the surveillance systems uh, in, in this fantastic country. And also we have got a spin-off project in Portugal, in Madeira, and we will also discuss later on how our Portuguese colleagues are doing uh, IoT-based sensing. Our third team is looking at how do we combine all the data and how we actually develop some kind of dashboard systems which will be used for early warning and response. So our MediPlus board project is illustrating how zoonotic data, surveillance data, and data from social media could be all brought together in a single dashboard to strengthen the decision making of public health experts in the field. We also look on social media, not just for uh, pre predicting pandemics, but also understanding how social media is being used and misused for misinformation or purposefully, uh, purposefully created fake news. We have specifically look at understanding how um, anti-vaccination lobbies are using social media, Twitter in particular, to create fake news and how is this being spread through the, um, through the network and who are the main players who are actually propagating and disseminating the fake news further. We've done a lot of work in antibiotic prescribing and antibiotic resistance. As you know, antibiotic resistance is one of the global problems, perhaps as important for us to solve as humankind as global warming. We have worked in this massive field in two different settings. We developed um, a training app for surgeons in Nigeria, and now we are uh, piloting it also in the UK to strengthen prescribing at the point of care and improve compliance with WHO guidelines. And this is our fantastic team in Nigeria winning one of the prizes. And we demonstrated that behavior change. We really could say that the app being used as a decision support tool at the point of care advised the um, surgeon if the decision he or she was making was not in compliance to reconsider the prescription uh, decision and give an opportunity to record a change. This, this app has also got some gamification features to keep people engaged in the project. And I look forward how this is going to be uh, deployed in the NHS. The second project in the field of antibiotic prescribing has been aimed at children. It was a large EU project. Uh, I partially also started at City University where I worked before. 
using um, gamification and serious game to teach children about antibiotics, about good and bad bugs, improving the awareness of, um, of hand hygiene, respiratory hygiene, and um, learning what micro microbes actually are. So this project was really good fun and kids enjoy it much more than actually being taught from textbooks, as you can imagine. Our, our, another project which finished last year is called MANTRA. Uh, MANTRA stands for Maternal and Newborn um, Technology for Increasing Maternal and Child Health and Geohazards in Nepal. So we work in this beautiful country with uh, rural, rural women who, as you can imagine, most of them are uh, living in an increased poverty and there's also a high degree of illiteracy in this country, especially in women. So developing an educational game, it was a serious game again, which was only using pictograms to teach women how they can protect themselves and improve their maternal health and the health of their babies was really challenging and really rewarding projects. It was humbling to see the people who never had a mobile phone in their hand in a few minutes got used to using touch screens and uh, actually enjoy playing the game and really enjoy the sessions with us. Our longest running project is called ENRIC. ENRIC is information needs resource for infection and prevention and control. And especially in the COVID times, it was important to see how much things as boring as hand washing suddenly become a household story and how important it is to repeat these basic messages, both for professionals and for members of public. And of course, we have worked extensively around the COVID pandemics. We have developed um, a project called Zoom or Not to Zoom. You will learn more about uh, monitoring uh, public uh, in the UK throughout the various stages of the pandemic. And we also developed an app. Um, it was called initially my lockdown journal, and then it was uh, updated as my activity journal to allow people to record the events they're doing and how they're enjoying. So as they have some sense of time and sense of enjoyment, they could come back and uh, they could they could repeat what they enjoyed. And this will be also um, showcased later on. We also work with our, co our colleagues in uh, Barcelona, in Spain, in understanding uh, Twitter discourse throughout the uh, COVID-19 and looking at what citizens actually shared on social media during COVID. And you can say in most countries, citizens were quite upset with their government's response. And finally, um, we also have built on our existing collaboration with our colleagues in Northeast Brazil during COVID-19. And uh, we work jointly with a, a local institute in Pernambuco, Risk and Disaster Reduction, and also um, SGIS initiative with our colleagues who are here today to improve uh, a prediction and uh, drone-based monitoring of crowds and compliance with restrictions in this uh, beautiful country. So if you're interested in the projects further, please look at the uh, report or talk to me after the event. So I would like to thank you, the DPHE team. You can see all of them there, from students and interns to our um, postdocs and collaborators who have been instrumental in contributing to this project and making all this success happen. So thank you very much to the DPHE team. And I also would like to thank you to the MIWA team, our Brazilian colleagues uh, in two cities where we work, in Cacifa and in Campina Grande and uh, collaborators in both of these countries and also our colleagues uh, in, in Turkey who due to visa issues uh, could not actually be with us here today, unfortunately, but uh, they are the third country involved in the MIWA project. So that was the overview of the center and I would uh, kickstart the workshop. So we have four sessions planned for you today. So the first session is looking specifically at vector-borne diseases and using modeling in IoT technology and is based around our experience in Brazil. Then after a coffee break, we will have two sessions together. Session two is looking at digital interventions and we'll be presenting some of the apps we have developed, our colleagues in, in Portugal have developed, looking at um, an overview of what has been achieved about the cutting edge technology to combat um, the pandemic is and what we can learn for post COVID times. And straight after session two, we will go to session three, looking at the kind of wider environmental and cultural factors which are important for One of Health and surveillance. 
Then there's going to be a coffee break, a second coffee break, and at 6 p.m. we will come back here with a strategic panel, and I'm proud that we will receive a welcome for the panel for our new UCL Vice Provost for Research, Professor, Professor Grant Rees. So we're looking forward to have our VIP visitors for the panel, and after the panel, as I said, there will be um, some refreshments and, um, and drinks outside for us to network. So that's the plan for today. So thank you for listening to me, and I will hand over to the chair of the first session, Professor Tertio Ambrosi.